Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Healthy Aging Lecture. I'm Kate, uh, the Manager of Senior Health with Virginia Hospital Center, and I'm joined by Blanca, my coworker in Senior Health, and then our guest speaker, who I will just introduce in a moment, Sarah. Um, let me just remind you about today's call. We are going to be talking about um, creative and um, safe things you can do to live independently. Uh, I know Sarah has a lot of great ideas to share with you, so um, I'm excited to get into the presentation. Um, but just to start, let me remind all of you, in case you're new to our um, webinar format, everybody's on listen-only mode, but please, please, please feel free to use that um, chat or question box to send us your questions throughout the presentation. Um, Sarah's happy to take them as we go along. Um, and, as well as take some at the end, but so so don't um, you know don't don't delay. Go ahead and type them into that question box, and we can we can um, be monitoring that and and pass those questions along to Sarah. Um, also, just so you know, this is being recorded, so you will all get a copy or a, a link to it. You can listen to this later. I know Sarah also has some resources um, that we're planning to send out after the presentation, or I should say, probably Monday, Tuesday next week. Um, but so you'll be getting um, both the slides and some resources um, and the recording. So hopefully that will be a good reminder and you're welcome to share that with others who weren't able to join us today. So with that, let me tell you, Sarah Pickford is joining us. She is an occupational therapist um, and she is also, let me get this right, Sarah, you're the manager of community participation and skill building services at Brain Injury Services, which is located in Springfield, Virginia. And I know you've been there a number of years, Sarah. You're welcome um, to share a little bit more about yourself once we get going. Um, but thank you so much for being with us today. And we look forward to your presentation. Thanks for the introduction, Kate. And welcome everybody who's here. Um, as Kate said, yes, I am from Brain Injury Services. And we're going to kick off. We've got so much to go through today. So what I'm going to tell you is right off the bat, there's no way we're going to get through it all. So <laughs> just bear with me. It, it, it's OK. We're going to go through as much as we can. But as you um, heard, you're going to get a copy of the slides. So anything that we don't go over, you'll still have access to. And I know there's probably going to be questions about where can I get these tools and uh, products that I mentioned. So I am sending out a document that has links and names for everything that's mentioned in this presentation. So you'll have all of that. I don't have any prices listed because things change around um, depending on where you're ordering from and just day to day. So I, I don't have any prices listed, but they will there will be links there as to places where you can actually go and purchase or find out more information about this stuff. Um, so let's kick it off and let's get started. So the first thing that I want to say is that this presentation, it's just educational. Um, I'm not giving out any medical advice. And even though I'm going to talk about a lot of different products, you really need to talk to your healthcare professional um, about your specific situation before using any of these. I don't want anybody to feel like I'm just blatantly recommending these things because everybody's situation is different. And obviously, I don't know who you are, so I have no way of knowing if it's a good fit for you or not. Um, and other than being employed by Brain Injury Services, I really have no financial um, disclosures to make. I don't get any money for talking about any of these products. I don't have any affiliation with any of them. So this is solely my opinion. Um, so you can be uh, assured of that. So let me just do a plug for Brain Injury Services. So I've been at Brain Injury Services for, this is, I'm in my ninth year. So I'm going on 10 years now. Um, it's a wonderful nonprofit. We, we do have our offices based out of Springfield, but we actually cover the entire Northern Virginia area, all the way to Winchester and all the way south down to Fredericksburg. So we have a huge coverage area. And in order to qualify for services, you must have a documented acquired brain injury, which can include things like stroke, it can include a traumatic brain injury, anoxic injury, um, chemo brain. There's a lot of different ways that you might be able to qualify other than what we think of as a, a typical traumatic brain injury. Uh, we offer a bunch of different services that are listed over here on the left. I work for Compass, 
which is our basically our occupational therapy department, where we provide services that are kind of uh, to extend the continuum of care beyond what a traditional rehab setting can offer. So if you have interest in any of that, please reach out. You can visit our website, you can call us and get information if you think you might qualify for services. So we're gonna just jump right in because I know you guys don't really wanna hear that much more about me or about where I work. I know you're just here for the, the devices, the tools and tips. Um, but what I will tell you before we go into the products is that my background is kind of unusual in that I'm an occupational therapist, but before I became an OT, I actually um, studied and was involved in product design. I'm an industrial designer. so. That's why I have a special place in my heart for assistive technology products. Um, I knew going into school for industrial design that I wanted to do things for people with disabilities. So I kind of tailored all my learning towards that and then went and got my master's in OT. So as we go through here, some of my design pickiness might, might show, but um, just want to give you that background as we go through. So the first thing we're going to start off with is dressing. Um, some of these things you might have heard of if you guys have been in occupational therapy before. Whoops, sorry, I'm trying to minimize this thing that's distracting me, but it's got to make that panel go away. All right, there we go. Uh, you might have heard of some of these things before if you've been in rehab. These are kind of the, the very common things that, that you talk about all the time. Standard dressing tools like a uh, dressing stick. I don't know, can you guys see me moving around my, my mouse? Anybody see that? I do. Yeah, we see it, Sarah. Okay, good. So I can gesture around here. Okay, because I'm a big gesturer. So uh, the dressing hooks um, help can help if you have had a stroke, you have a hemiplegic arm, or if you have reduced range of motion because of shoulder issues, anything like that. So you might have seen some of these things. They look kind of wonky, but um, they can actually be helpful if you learn how to use them appropriately. And Button hooks are to help you with those small buttons. They're these little devices. They come in a lot of different versions, um, but this is kind of a traditional one that you might have seen. But I wanted to show you, this is a brand new design that I had never seen before. This is the Vive button hook, and it has a special hole here so that you could stick a finger in there to make it easier for people who have difficulty gripping, which I thought was very fascinating because obviously if you're having trouble with buttons, you probably have a little bit of difficulty with uh, finger mobility. So that's a new one that I actually found doing this presentation and I'm ordering myself so I can test it out. Haven't tested it out myself yet, but it looks cool. And the product designer in me just loves the way that it, it looks and the ergonomics of it. It looks, looks really nice. So also some really low tech options here are zipper pulls. And I just wanted you guys to be aware that there's a whole bunch of different kinds out there. Um, there's kind of a, the traditional kinds of zipper pulls that come on a zipper, but if you have a difficult time using that, holding that, pinching that, then there are some other options here. Um, the U-shaped ones, and usually these are, you see a lot of kinds that have this like, um, the, the fabric or the, the string cord that you kind of can just loop through. And sometimes they have a plastic thing on the bottom. But I like this U-shaped one because it holds it open for you to get a thumb or something in there. So I think that this is really handy. And as well as the T-shaped one that can go between fingers. So if you're really having a hard time grasping, then I think that these are good options for you. And then this is a new one that I just found, um, which is the ZP solution one. And what I like is that it comes in different colors. There's the silver, the black, there's actually a gold one too. And it does have a place where you can kind of either hook a finger through, or if you're using a, a button hook slash zipper um, assist, then you can hook something in there as well. So these are, it's just a little bit more stylish, I feel like. I feel like it's a, whoops. I'm trying to get, and Zoom's telling me to update. That's not very helpful. I think that this is, is a nice kind of option that doesn't scream like assistive technology. As we're going through here, I also kind of want to point out, I'm, I'm focusing a little bit more on kind of like the low tech to no tech type um, tools in here because they're accessible to everybody, but I will be throwing in some other more high tech stuff there. So um, 
I'll try and kind of delineate that out for you guys, but I wanted it to be as broad reaching this presentation as possible. So these are, you know, very inexpensive things that anybody can use. All right, so this is a new find for me as well. And I will say this is a little on the expensive side, but buttons to buttons is a new thing that I found and I have not tried this out but they actually are magnets so it's kind of like two pieces that you use so that there's magnets on either side and you can put it on your buttons directly so there's no sewing there's no need to adapt i've um, worked with people who have difficulty with dressing and sometimes you use velcro adaptation sometimes you know there's different things that you can do but this one you know you have to sew that on and there are magnets that you can get that you do have to sew on as well this is a no sew option. So you pay a premium for that, but it's kind of a neat thing just to know about. So I just wanted you guys to be aware that this is a new one that I found. Haven't tried it out yet, but it does look really cool. It looks like it has to be a pretty standard size button though. So it might not work depending on what size button you have. Hey, Sarah, quick question on the buttons. If I, if I can jump in. Yeah. Go for are it. They, are they strong enough to hold or flip open? To hold or flip open. I'm not sure what um, that means. I mean, they will definitely, they're strong enough to hold together. Strong okay. enough to flip open. I mean, they can't be too hard, otherwise, you'll have a difficult time opening up the, the actual thing. Is that what they're talking about? Uh, just a little clarification that um, the audience member wrote in do they open easily, in other words, unintentionally, like by accident? Oh, no. I do not think so. I think that they probably. What I read, because I did read the reviews on it, is that people really liked these. And some people had a problem with them not fitting on the, the buttons that they had on their particular shirt and with the pricing. But no, nobody complained about the magnets not holding. Um, so my thought would be is that it's probably a, a fairly strong magnet in terms of like, it's not just gonna gape open on you. Um, Great. So yeah, that's, that's what I found. Again, I haven't tried these out myself, so I can't assure you about that but uh, the reviews were all very good. Thank you. Yeah, and thanks, that's exactly what I want you to do. If you've got questions, like jump in there because I'm going really fast. And this is because you guys will have the, the video to come back to and replay if you want. Um, normally, if I'm doing a presentation to people, I try and go slower, but I've just got so much to say. So you're getting the speed version right now. Um, and you have my contact information. So if you have more questions and you don't raise them during this presentation, you can always email me. Um, so I do wanna talk about compression garments, particularly compression stockings, because, oh my God, are they the bane of everybody's existence or what? Um, they're just absolutely horrible. So I found this amazing guy. So he is part of self-care therapy. I think he's actually one of the co-owners and he does these awesome reviews and videos on how to don compression garments. He does reviews on the different types of assistive technology to help with it. It's just, it's so good. And I just am so grateful that somebody like went through and actually shows how to do these things. He shows how to troubleshoot with certain devices. So these are just like kind of two examples of some different devices there. Um, this one's really weird. It's like this jelly kind of thing that kind of helps you roll up and then there's kind of slippy ones. So there's all kinds of devices to help with compression sock donning and doffing, taking it off because that's also a problem. So if you go and check out his videos, he does such a better job than I would ever be able to do talking to you about them and talking about what considerations you might wanna have depending on if you have a caregiver who's helping you, can you reach your feet and bend down or do you have restrictions about that? Um, it's definitely worth a watch if you are somebody who's using compression garments. All right, so now we're getting into the kitchen and this could seriously be a presentation all by itself because there's so many kitchen gadgets. Oh my gosh, it's ridiculous the amount of things that are available for the kitchen. Um, but the very first thing that I wanna say is like protecting your hands. So when you're in the kitchen, um, your hands are so busy. So these are some products that I have recommended for people before. Um, finger guards. So these are like little uh, steel or different kinds of metal protectors that you kind of slip over so that it helps protect your fingers when you're cutting something with a knife. 
there's a million versions of these, the, the finger guards and also the slicer, like the tomato and onion slicers. And I've had clients who really like these and who have found these to be super helpful as far as like keeping their fingers away from a sharp knife. So there's, a, I will list in my uh, resources page that I give you um, some places to buy these. But honestly, you can just kind of pick up any version. They're all kind of the same. Um, so these are kind of good to know about. Now, if you need, I think one of the problems with this is like, it's great to protect your fingers, but what if you get a pinky sticking out or, you know, it, it's, it's okay if you have a lot of awareness about where your fingers are and you're still being very cautious. But if you're somebody who has a little bit of inattention, um, I would say that it's probably better maybe to try these um, no cut, cut resistant gloves. So I've actually, people use these a lot in the general population for when they're using the mandolin slicers because people slice their um, knuckles all the time on those things. And so I actually did get some of these from my dad for using the mandolin. Um, but I particularly like the, the no cry gloves with the reinforced fingers because they reinforce on those places where you're most likely to get cuts. Now they're not puncture proof, you know, it's not like you can still hurt yourself with these gloves on but they certainly are a good preventative step if you can, can put those on before you do some knife work or use a, a sharp object. So I like, I like that. And I've also gotten for clients, so something that I've run into problems with clients is um, burning themselves when they take something out of the oven. And so there's kind of two kind of solutions that I've worked with clients on. The, the easiest, simplest thing is these oven rat guards. And so these are just like silicone, heat resistant little uh, guards that you can put on your oven rack. So when you reach in to grab a cookie sheet or to pull a dish out, your forearm doesn't get burned because I've done that myself. And I have clients who frequently depth perception is a little bit off. Sometimes they'll hit the, the hot oven rack when they're trying to get something out. So that is one option. And I have had clients who really like that, but I, you can still burn yourself around it on different ways. If you're using a pot holder, you can still not get it in the right position. So this is a kind of a, a, a less in, invasive version, but I think that having these gloves, so these are heat resistant gloves. Um, they're, you know, called this particular version. There's a bunch of different versions. You might've heard of the of glove, which is on like as seen on TV. And I've gotten some people the of gloves before, but what I really like is they now offer versions that cover the forearm. So a lot of them kind of cut off right around the wrist, but if you can get the kind that covers your forearm, that's gonna prevent some of those burns that happen when you're reaching into an oven. So there's, there's different versions out there. This is one version that had the nice length and had good reviews. Um, but I do really think that this is particularly timely to talk about before, before we have Thanksgiving is be careful around those ovens, guys. It's, it's dangerous, dangerous work in there. Uh, the other thing that I commonly hear complaints about is opening jars and cans. Um, particularly if you're a person who maybe only has the use of one arm or if you have arthritis that makes things difficult to open. So I've got some options here. So I wanna take a moment to talk about non-slip material. So these kind of non-slip materials, you might've seen them before or you might've gotten some from your occupational therapist in the past. But the brands that are very well known as being high quality brands are Tenera or Dyson. And so if you search for these, you can actually, you can get the stuff that's shaped in the products like this that are available, or you can actually get a roll. And so you can actually unroll it and cut whatever shape you need. Um, so I use this, you can use this for opening a can or a jar. Sometimes if you just have a, uh, a piece that you can stick a jar on top of, that's enough. It's gonna grip the surface. So if it'll give you a little bit of leverage if you can only use one hand. Sometimes it's good enough just to have the non-slip. So you can stick the jar down on there and then turn it and that's good enough for you. But they also have the little jar openers that you can squeeze from the top. So if you had a second hand that worked, you could hold 
hold with one hand and then use this for the, the opening at the top. They have a small one for more like pill size, you know, or smaller bottle type things versus the jar size ones. So you can get the fancy shaped ones or you can literally like cut a piece of just non-skid material and use that. Uh, if you need a little bit more help than that, I actually, this works really well, the solo one-handed jar opener. So it's a wedge. And so you push, so any size that fits, as long as your jar is not bigger than this end, you push it back till it's wedged in there. And then you can use that um, to hold your can or jar while you open. The problem with this is that it is big. And so storing that when you're not using it is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, and that's been the main complaint that I've heard from clients who use this one. You can get similar wedge type things that are like mounted under the counter and things like that, but they're usually a little bit harder to do. And I kind of don't like the undermount ones because then I feel like it's more likely that you're gonna spill what's ever in the jar. I like that this is on a solid surface. Just my opinions here. I also have people who struggle with can openers. Um, so there are a lot of different kinds of electric can openers. I've heard good things about the Kitchen Mama. I know that um, some of my clients have used it. And so this is an option potentially if you're struggling with opening cans that, you know, using a can opener. There's, there's a bunch of different kinds and, you know, there's always reviews that some of them don't work well. I think it really just kind of depends on your situation. So I think the best thing to do is just to try them out if you're a person who opens a lot of cans. So I also love the OXO Good Grip stuff. I just think they, they make really high quality items. So what I do like to, to mention is having, sometimes you can get actual kitchen products that already have a non-skid material on them. So you can do this. This is an example of a batter bowl that has the non-skid on the bottom. Um, you can get salad spinners that have non-skid. Uh, some specialty stores actually have non-skid that you can get for plates and things like that. Or you can, if you get a roll of like Dyson or something, you can cut out like a placemat size thing to put stuff on. And so this is kind of very, very helpful, particularly if you um, struggle or are only doing one-handed cooking to have something that's not gonna move on you while you're stirring in it. Uh, it also has a really nice handle. I Ever since I started buying mixing bowls that have handles, I'm like, why, why did I never do this? Like now it's essential. I need a handle and I need a spout because there's just no reason not to have one. It makes things so much easier. So I highly recommend getting something that has those features, whether or not it's this particular one or something else. Um, I also love the angled measuring cups. So I have this, I use it like almost every day. Like it's amazing, I love it. Um, so what this does is you can easily, you don't have to like crouch down and try and look and see if you've got something even because of the angle, you can look from the top and you can see exactly how much you've filled. So I think that that is, is just so convenient. It's like, why, why are not all measuring cups like that? It's a great idea. And I highly recommend trying out something with that kind of feature. All right, so this one looks so ridiculous. Um, the magic opener, it's definitely looks like an as seen on TV thing and it, it literally says as seen on TV. Um, but it actually does work pretty well. I was, I bought this um, the magic opener extreme first and I used it and I was, I was actually really surprised. Well, I thought this thing looks like it's never gonna work at all. Um, but it has different features so it can open up a variety of different bottle sizes. And then it also has this little prong so it can help open up um, the pool tab cans, you know, soda cans, things like that. This is a small version. They both have um, magnets so you can just stick them on the side of your fridge and keep them handy. So this is the extreme version. And then these are two other versions. This is the plus version. So they do have different sizes. Um, the plus version will do like the big bottles, the big jugs and jars um, that have a larger diameter. On the bottom, I don't know if you can see, I should have put a picture, but they have metal plates that have different opening sizes. So um, finding whatever you use or open the most, having the right one to fit that is useful. And if you go to their website, you can actually order interchangeable plates as well. So it looks silly. I'm not a fan of the bright yellow, but it does make it easy to find in your junk drawer. 
and they do work pretty well, surprisingly, they do. Um, so this is again for people, I work again with a lot of people who have had strokes, who might have hemiplegia. So for one-handed cooking, um, having an adaptive cutting board can be super helpful. So these have things like a vice grip. So this also could be used to open jars to hold something while you're cutting it. Um, so things like that can be super useful. Again, they have the suction cups on the bottom, so this isn't gonna move on you. Uh, the spikes um, can be used to spear like a, a potato or food um, to hold it in place while you're cutting it. If you only have one hand, you have to be using the knife with that hand and you don't have a stabilizing hand. So the stuff like this can be super helpful, but be careful when you're storing it because these spiky things, uh, yeah, they're kind of a little bit dangerous when they're being stored. Uh, I keep, I, I use styrofoam and I like put a styrofoam cap on them because they're, they're difficult. Um, but if you get one with built up corners, one problem is spreading butter or jam on, on any kind of uh, toast or bagel or something like that. And so the built up corners on, a div on something like this actually help hold it in place while you're spreading something on your food. So that's actually kind of nice. And I wish this one had the built up corners, but it doesn't. Um, you could put it in the vise, but you don't want to, that's a lot of work to vise grip your piece of toast. So just my opinion. All right, tips and tools for the bathroom. All right, so you've all heard of grab bars. I know you have, but I really do think that there are some stylish options for grab bars. If you're somebody who's kind of doesn't want it to look super um, medical nature in your beautiful bathroom. Um, so really, um, I love some of these options here that also integrate other functions. So this is like a grab bar with a towel holder. This one is, you know, a paper, um, toilet paper holder. I mean, this doesn't look like a grab bar, but it does offer, you know, the same amount of support as a, as a traditional grab bar. And I really like this one that builds in a shelf feature. I think that that's super nice to have that there because it's something useful that you would want in your bathroom anyways, and it just happens to have the support of having a grab bar. So I just wanted to let you guys know there are a lot of options out there. Um, if you do a little bit of digging, um, Moen in particular, in particular, I think has a lot of really great options. And then this Avis in Invisalign, this this Invisa product line. Invisalign is for the dental work. This Invisa product line also has a variety of different things that are available out there. These are just two examples. Well, it's good to know about. And then another thing that I think people don't know that much about is it's really handy to have some kind of grab bars next to your toilet. And there's a lot of options for doing that. Um, the easiest option that a lot of people I know do is if they have one of those three-in-one commodes, they actually just put the three-in-one commode over the toilet seat so that they have armrests that they can kind of use to come to a stand. Um, but if you're somebody who wanted kind of a more sturdy or a more permanent fix, then you can actually install these go up and down. They, they're flip bars. So that's really nice if you're doing a transfer onto the toilet or something like that, you can have the, the flip bars that go up and down and get out of the way if you're sharing a bathroom with somebody who doesn't need them. So I just wanted you to know that such things were available um, and that those are things that you can look into if, if you're trying to design a bathroom that has a little bit more support. These are other things that you can do. So I do have a client who has used one of these security poles. This is a pole that goes from your ceiling to your floor and they have it next to their toilet. So the toilet's here and they can use this to help them come to a stand um, and to transfer. Actually, they, they stood and transferred into a wheelchair with this one. Um, so that is an option. I don't know, not many people talk about having support poles. It does kind of look like a stripper pole, like I'm gonna be honest guys, but you know, if, if it's in a bathroom, it's, it's pretty obvious, um, but you could put this anywhere in your house. You could also put it next to a bed, next to a couch. Um, so it is a useful thing to know about if you're a person who needs extra support when you're coming to a stand. Um, the other things um, that I like to talk about are when you're in the bathroom, where do you place your toilet paper? And I cannot tell you the amount of people who have their toilet papers in a really weird, awkward spot that requires a lot of twisting and turning. <laughs> and it's just bad for your back. Like it's just bad ergonomics. 
So I think a freestanding toilet paper holder is a great idea if you can put one in a place that you can reach easily. I personally have a freestanding toilet paper holder because that's the way I roll. But I like this one because it actually, you can choose to have your extra toilet paper rolls on it or not. Um, so that way you never get stranded. Nobody wants to be stranded on the toilet with no toilet paper, the worst thing ever. So I think this is a very clever design. The other thing is if you are a person who struggles with um, balance and maybe you're using a shower chair, or even if you're just a, a person who likes to be able to get that water in different spots, having a handheld shower head, I think is a great thing. And this one, this one is actually magnetic. So if you have a handheld shower head and you've used it before, it can be sometimes very tricky and hard to get that shower head back into its holder, its little holster. I'm only 5'2", I'm very short, and our shower head is like super high. So I really struggle with this. This is a, a for real problem for me. And so I actually have this now, and it is the magnet one. And I swear, I love this. I love this shower head so much. It's so easy to just hold it up and then just thunk, it just magnetically attaches itself. Um, so this is really great, I feel like, for people who struggle with those normal um, shower head holsters. Now, if you're a person who's using like a tub bench or a shower chair or something, then it's nice to have something like this up high or you know, maybe a person that you share the bathroom with. But if you're somebody who's using a seated position, then having a different holster or different place that you can reach in an easy location for you is really important. So you can get suction cup ones and then you can kind of play around with where you want it to go, where it can be within easy reach for you. Um, so there are ones that are more permanent adherence and things like that, but I love just having a suction cup that you can kind of play around with until you find the right location. And then if that location works for you, like, yeah, sure, you could invest in, and get one that you can actually place there permanently. But I also feel like a lot of people don't want to go to that permanent step because they're thinking about resale and things like this. So this is kind of a damage-free way to do it. And the suction cups, you know, if you apply them correctly on a flat surface that's clean and dry, they actually do work pretty well. Um, they're not going to be as great as like a permanent fixture, but they still work pretty well. So it's something to know about. These are some additional shower head options. Um, if you are using a bench or a chair, I happen to love this particular one. I think that it's just gorgeous the way that it was designed. It's um, it's got a lot of really nice features. It has a little, a little shower head holder here already. It has a place for your accessories. It has a little thing to help you when you're coming to a stand. It's a really nice designed one. Um, but if you are in a place where, and this, this is kind of for like an over the tub type situation where you want to transfer over a tub edge. But if you have an actual shower stall and that's all you have, something like this, they do have folding seats. Um, and what I like is that this has an option to have the armrest to help you come to a stand because a lot of the built in seats that you sometimes see in shower stalls, they don't have armrests. So that makes it very difficult if somebody's coming to a stand. So I like things that have the armrest like this. And this is very low profile. It folds away if you have are sharing space with somebody else who doesn't need it. It's very easy to just have that be out of the way. If you are using some kind of seated system, then for one thing, I highly recommend you get a long hose. Um, a lot of the shower heads come with five foot hoses, which is just not long enough. Some of them are like extra long hose and they give you six feet. No, I don't even think six feet is good. I would go seven feet. Um, it gives you a lot more flexibility of being able to use that shower head. Um, and then these shower heads, I love them, I love my magnetic one, but I like that these have pause buttons or on off switches. Um, so if you, particularly if you're having a caregiver help you with bathing, you know, you need to get out of the water sometimes. And if you have this handheld shower head and it's just like spraying everywhere and you're dropping it on the ground, like it's hard to do. So having a pause button to stop the water flow can be super helpful. So these are two options. Um, most things that have a pause switch, like this one, most ones that have a pause switch, they still have a trickle of water coming out. 
And there's a reason for that. And that's not leaking. It's because it helps keep the water pressure um, from building up in your pipes. And also it keeps it from overheating or getting cold. Um, so that helps with keeping the water temperature correctly. So this is one that trickles when it's on a pause. This one actually has an on off switch that will literally stop all water from coming out. Now, some people prefer that so that they, you know, it's really, there's no water coming out until you release the button. But I did read in some reviews that it does, some people, the pressure has built up and it has, you know, come off or, you know, kind of messed up their pipes a little bit. And other people have said that it does build up hot water. And so when you turn it on, it's a little bit hotter than what you might have had it set at. So everything comes with its pluses and minuses. Um, just good to know about. So if you are a person who is transferring into a tub shower combo, a lot of times you get the straight up bench or you might have been told just to get a shower chair. But if you're a person who really struggles with lifting your feet, getting over this big tub at ledge is, is really hard. Um, and so I love this um, type of shower bench chair that swivels. So this, it comes out over the edge of the tub and you can actually back into this. So if you're using a walker or something like that, you can back into this and then reach back and grab onto the handles to lower yourself. And then it swivels. So then this swivels so that it's facing the shower and you can slide right into the tub. So to me, this is just so much safer than trying to do just a plain bench and you know having somebody try and help you lift your legs over and things like that. This is easier on you. It's, it's easier on the caregiver if you have a caregiver helping you. Um, Usually you're, you're released home and, you know, if you've gotten a, a home assessment, they might have ordered something through your insurance that's very basic. I have gotten sometimes insurance with a letter, letter of medical necessity to cover a more advanced um, tub bench like this, um, but it, you really kind of probably need to work with it, an occupational therapist or somebody to help you figure out if this is a, a good upgrade for you. But I really do think that for some people, this makes all the difference in the world. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go there, guys. I don't know how this is gonna be received, but I am a huge advocate for the bidet. Um, this is um, an add-on bidet, so this goes onto your normal toilet, and it's a toilet seat that gets added on, and it does have a bidet function, and it has a control panel. Now. I switched to using a bidet. I, I, I share a home with my parents and my mom, you know, as you age, you get thinner skin everywhere. And, and she was having some issues and some problems that, you know, it just made sense to get a bidet and to try and use that to see if that kind of helped with her, her issues. And it 100% did. And once we got one and she was trying it, like I tried it, I loved it. My dad tried it, he loved it. We ended up getting more more of a days for our other toilet and um so i have tried three different bidet manufacturers and types and i can tell you after having tried all of them toto is the best one it's expensive this is their base model the most basic one that comes and it's still pretty pricey but it's 100 percent worth it um it is once you go to a bidet you never want to go back um, it's just, it's so, it feels so much cleaner. You reduce your toilet paper use. It's just better on your skin. Um, the heated seat is a super nice luxury. Um, I'm not, not gonna lie, like, especially during the winter time, like I didn't know it was something that I needed in my life. And now I'm like, wow, I really never wanna sit on a cold toilet seat again. Um, but the bidets are amazing. And I've had clients who've used them. You know, it really makes it, it reduces the, the turning and the twisting that has to go with, with wiping. Um, I usually use the bidet and then pat dry anyways with a little bit of toilet paper, but it does reduce the toilet paper usage and the amount of twisting that you need to do. Um, and I also have a coworker, my other OT coworker who has bidets in every, every one of her toilets as well. Um, it's taken the world by storm, guys. I don't know why the US is so far behind in advocating for bidet usage, but it is, it's really worth 
looking into. Everybody that's tried them at my house is like, I need to get one of these. Um, so I have actually an aunt who was is trying to get one for Christmas. <laughs> so it's it's worth testing out. It's worth trying, guys, and it, it does make a difference. So this is a high tech option. So you guys are probably familiar with you know those. Um, recliner chairs that have a little lift, a little seat boost for people who struggle to come to a stand from a seated position. So there actually are electronic versions of that for your toilet. Um, this is one version, this is the most affordable version that I found and I think it was around like the four fifty, five hundred dollars dollars um, mark. So it's expensive, but if this really does help you with your independence to be able to safely come to a stand or to safely come to a sit, um, I think that, that, you know, this might be um, something of medical necessity for you. It could reduce falls. It could make things safer and keep you more independent. So this is something to look into if that's a problem for you. All right, now this is another section that I could do an entire presentation on. So we're gonna kind of blast through it and see, see what we can do with medication management. Um, there are a million bajillion pill organizers out there. And I'm sure you guys are aware of this, but if you have one that doesn't quite work for you, go find another one. There's so many different ones out there. Um, so I personally, I take a lot of vitamins and I have medications and I love this Vitacary case. Um, what I love about it is it actually has this large space in the center where I can put, I, I take um, fish oil, which is huge pills. They're enormous if you guys have taken them. And I can fit seven days worth of fish oil pills in this section. And then I divvy up my other daily pills into my daily sections here. Um, it's small enough that it fits really nicely and unobtrusively into my purse. So this is a great option if you're a person who's on the go, wants to take something with it, you, and if you only take medications once a day, or if you take something like maybe midday when you're usually out of the house or something like that. Um, so I think this is a really great, I've, I'm on like my third one or something like that. They last me a couple of years and then the plastic breaks. Um, I love it, I think it's great. But if you're another person who is frequently on the go, one of the main problems with a lot of the pill boxes is like they're designed for if you're in one place all the time. And of course, during COVID times, most of us are in, in our homes all the time now. But if you're an active senior and you're somebody during normal times where like you're out and about during the day, you're not gonna carry your seven day pill case with you when you're going around. So something like this is kind of cool. It's, um, they come in little pods. So you can actually take the pod out with you. So um, if you're going out and about, you can take the pod with you in your pocket, which I think is, is kind of cool. Again, even though it's a 30 day pill thing, it's only once a day. So I do find that most people are not taking pills once a day. Most people have multiple times a day, but if this, this might work for you, if you have a daytime pill and a nighttime pill, maybe you take these with you for your daytime pills and you keep your nighttime pill next to the bed it's an option. You could have multiple ones of these also. I also feel like filling pill boxes is the bane of my existence. So this one, I, if you're going to have your traditional like fill box, that's a, you know, big, what I like is that this one slides out so you can easily fill these things. If you have the little flappy things and you're trying to open up those flappy things and fill it every time. Oh my God, I hate that so much. It drives me crazy. So this is a really nice one that the entire slot fills out. You can fill it pretty quick and easy. It does give you the four times a day options, which is also good if you're taking your pills four times a day um, or multiple times a day. All right, now we need to talk a little bit about medication safety. So I, I have gotten several clients a, a basic little security um, safe to store their medications because I have had clients who have had caregivers, children, or friends steal their medications, um, which is just a sad state of our society, but it's true. Um, so it really does sometimes behoove you to, if you have medications that are those that are attractive for people to steal, it might be a good idea to put them in a safe. 
Um, I highly recommend getting a safe that has a pin pad and a key. Um, I think having two means of accessing it is very helpful. Most of my clients can rem remember a pin number more easily than they can remember where they put their key. Um, so I find that that works better and maybe give the key to somebody that you trust. Um, so if there's a battery failure, or if something happens with the pin code, the person that you can trust can give you the key or hide the key in a place where you'll know to look for it, but where other people won't know to look for it. Um, the other thing that has been a problem for people that I work with is taking as needed medications. Um, and those are really easy to overdose on, you know, particularly pain, pain pills or things like that, because you're trying to take them like every four to six hours or something like that. Um, but it can be hard to remember, when did I take it? Um, and so there are actually pill caps that can help you with that. So this time timer cap is um, a really cheap version that basically you can kind of like put down, like, so you're supposed to take a dose every four hours. So you could write it down there and what medication it is. And this is basically, it's a stopwatch. So it'll tell you, you know, two hours and 45 minutes have elapsed since you last opened it. Um, so that is, is very handy if you're a person who's doing that. Um, you can order this. I think I have the link. I think I found it on Amazon. But I've also found that sometimes if you ask your pharmacy, sometimes they have stuff like this. Um, I, I went to Giant Pharmacy once and they were like, oh, here, just have one. Um, so you could ask your pharmacist if they have something like this available for you. Now, if you need something fancier, the e-pill time cap, time cap versus time error cap, um, the e-pill one actually has an alarm on it. And so it will, it'll tell you when you're supposed to take it. Um, and it does have different, different modes and different features on it. And it's, it's pricey, but for some people it might be worthwhile. Um, so for more high tech options, there are a lot of different medication management apps. Um, there's lots of different features. If you have a smartphone, I really do think that if you're taking a lot of different medications, this can be very helpful. Um, these are two, if you're gonna start somewhere, start with these two to kind of look at and see if they seem like they're gonna meet your needs. The other thing that has been super successful for my clients is having a pharmacy prepackage and sort their pills for them. So this eliminates the whole having to sort out your pills, um, which is nice for people who really struggle with that or for people who are having caregivers do that. This can be kind of a, an easy way to do that. So there's different companies. I've had clients who enjoyed using both of these and I've had clients who've had problems with them. I think it just depends. Um, so they prepackage your pills. They give you a variety of different pills and they'll, you know, if you take them multiple times a day, they'll have, you know, 8 a.m., 1 p.m., 6 p.m. They'll, they'll put them into these packages and they come on a roll. Um, so you just rip off the package for that time of day and you just take it. Um, can be very convenient, can be very great. One of the downsides is that if you forget to take one, um, then you start having like a drawer full of forgotten skipped packages. Um, that you're paying for them, and then you kind of don't have a way to get them resorted back in. So there's there's downsides to it, but all in all, I think it's a great service to know about. These, I'm not even going to talk about these because you can go to this article and it will give you more than you ever wanted to know about. Um, kind of more robotic, automatic pill dispensers. These things are like the super high-tech versions of medication management. There's a lot of pros and cons to them. So if you want to know more about that, you can check it out. All right, these are the uh, miscellaneous things that I just had no idea where to put them. Um, reachers, okay, if you have a reacher that somebody gave you or the hospital gave you, like usually those are just, they're just not great reachers. They're usually designed for people, you know, who are having, you know, hip replacements or something or only gonna use it for like a week or two. Um, if you're a person who actually could benefit from a reacher, like go and get a good version of a reacher that will work for you. There's different lengths of ones, there's different weights, there's different jaw types. I particularly think that trigger type is important. If it if you have difficulty with that isolated trigger and you're using it frequently, that, you know, when you're squeezing it closed, you're only using one finger to hold it closed. So if you're getting heavier items or things like that, having something that uses your entire hand is much better, much, much better. So I really like the Pickstick Pro collections. They have a whole bunch of different kinds of things. Also get one that has a rotating head. 
like these heads rotate around so that if you're trying to get something, you don't have to rotate your arm. You can just rotate the head towards the different orientation. It's just one of those features that just you don't you didn't know that you need until you have one. And then you're just like, why, why did I not have this before? Um, other things to consider, um, these are a couple different other kinds of ones. Some come with magnetic um, things for, for picking up magnet, magnetic items, which is kind of cool. Um, some kind of have this kind of like jelly kind of like silicone grip on the inside that have gotten good reviews and ratings. And this one does have multiple fingers to help. Um, I've had people who really liked this grip and grab one. So again, they're very similar. A lot of them are very similar, but this one, the Jellas one, I actually have now put in my thing to order because I had never seen one before that has a shoehorn as well. So that is actually kind of cool that it has both things. It has a shoehorn and it's a, a reacher. Um, so this is good, particularly for donning and doffing shoes. Sometimes using the compression garment things, you need a reacher if you can't reach down to your feet and things like that. So if that's your case scenario, this, this would be a really good option for you. Other tools, I'm not gonna really go into these because they're kind of specific, but if you need a leg lifter, if you need hair dryer stand, lotion applicators, they're things to look into. These are some other things. I have some clients who really struggle and I, this is a COVID issue as well of like knowing what day of the week it is. Um, I, it, I feel like we're just all in a time warp. So having a clock that tells you what, what day it is and what the date is can be super helpful. Um, this is for making a bed. This will kind of like wedge and hold it up for you as you're tucking in the sheets. And I have a client who really loves it. I thought it looked like a total gimmick, but apparently like she thinks it's great. So I do really like these gadgets. Um, rechargeable lights, um, different motion activated lights. You can get rechargeable ones. You can get battery operated ones. Put these on your stairs or when you're going up and down in the dark, put them maybe in the bathroom for if you need a light when you walk in there. Um, increased lighting can reduce your fall risk so much. Um, and having something that's just motion activated is just a really good option. These are a very warm light and they have like a dim and a bright setting. So they're really good for if you need something to go in for like nighttime. Um, so they're not gonna blind you and they're very, um, they're very nice. So. I actually want to order these. I haven't tried this particular brand, but once I found them, I'm like, oh yeah, I want that. Um, outlet switches, like these are remote controlled outlets. So you can plug in lamps. If you're a person who has a bunch of lamps all over the place and you wander around and you're reaching and stretching and bending over furniture to turn your lamp on and off, um, this is a lifesaver and could prevent your fall, a fall risk. Um, you can plug in fans, you can plug in a variety of things that um, have an on off switch, and then you control them with a remote control unit. So I personally use these at home and in my office and I love them. And I always recommend getting one that comes with two remotes, because I can guarantee you you're going to lose one of the remotes. So get one that comes with two remotes. The other thing is rug throw rugs. If you've worked with an OT before and had a home visit, I'm sure they have told you throw rugs, cause falls, don't use rugs. <laughs> um, that, that transition when you're hitting that gap, like people will trip over those rugs. It's very dangerous. But if you're a person who absolutely refuses or for some reason absolutely needs to have a rug or a carpet somewhere, um, get carpet tape, tape them down, like make sure that those things are not going to catch. They're not going to slide on you. Um, really just like invest in it. It's it's worth doing to help protect your safety. Uh, this is a grab bar to help you get in and out of the car. Can be useful. I have clients who have really liked it. This is a memory bank. So this is a place where you can put all of your documents and all of your um, essential information in kind of one place. So if something happens to you that, you know, it can be easily found and, you know, somebody, a family member can have access to it. Or honestly, for people with memory problems, sometimes it's just helpful to have it so that you can refer to it yourself. You can get it in a workbook, a binder, or a USB drive. Oh, passwords. Guys, I can't tell you how many people I've struggled with passwords. There are actual password books that are physical books that you can write in like an address book. That is for the low tech version. There are password managers that are software programs that basically lock all of your passwords into a vault and this is what I use. I really think 
everybody should do it if you're tech savvy and you're using a you need to, to save your passwords. Um, so look into it. I highly, highly recommend getting a password manager. This is a random one that I just learned about for this presentation, but this is walking, walking sticks. Now I went a couple years ago to the Swiss Alps and used walking, hiking sticks for the first time, trekking poles. I had no idea that they would make as big of a difference as they did. Do I have a comment? Oh, no comment, Sarah. Actually, we're, we're getting to the end of the hour, so just we just want to allow a couple minutes for questions. All right. All right. Yep. I see we're, we're at about eight minutes to go. So um, these are worth looking into. Um, they're, they really do make a difference in helping you walk around. I'm going to skip some of these. Um, I do have some clients who really love their smart home devices, the you know Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa. I have clients who really love them. Um, so it's something worth looking, looking into. I do have a whole section on emergency preparedness that we will not get around to, but I just want to kind of run through these just so that you know, it's a really good idea. Um, depending on what county you live in, you can actually register and put in like your health profile and information. So go ahead and look at this if you're in one of these counties and, and do that. Um, Having a fire safety box, important. Having some kind of emergency crank radio, please get one of these. It's, it's gonna be worth it to have. And that's pretty much where we're at. So look, we got done with just enough time for questions. <laughs> See how I did that? See how I like ran through those last ones? Like, boom, I knew we weren't gonna get through it all. And I really could go and talk about so much more about these things, but let's see. Let's see what you guys got to say. Yeah. What are your questions? Oh, it was terrific, Sarah. I know I was taking lots of notes and thinking about my Christmas list to what I should get. I know. Out of people, this, is so. the, this is the perfect time to be doing this presentation. Because things totally. like the, crank, the hand crank radio, the emergency radio, you know, things like that, those are great Christmas gifts because yeah. everybody should have them. Everybody For should sure. have them. So Sarah, one question that came in, um, and I don't know if this would be your area that you of, of individuals that you've worked with, but for people with dementia, are there any devices you recommend um, either that you did bring up today or maybe that you could highlight as uh, things you didn't bring up, um, just in general, any, any devices you'd recommend for, for those individuals? Um, so a lot of these things would be useful for people with dementia. Um, the medication management stuff might be useful for people who are caring for people with dementia to make that easier. I've also worked with people who have, who are um, wander risks. Um, and that is always a little bit of a scary situation. And so there are some like Project Lifesaver you can look into. Um, some local counties use that where you can register if you have a person that might wander um, so that the police can kind of have to register to know how to approach that person. Um, I think having the emergency contact wallet cards is really important if you have a person with dementia who might not be able to, to communicate if they get lost or if it's an emergency situation, who they are and who their contact is. Um, I've also worked with um, GPS trackers um, with people who are wander risks and there are a lot of options out there, but it's kind of hard to sort through and it is expensive. Um, but that's something that I would look into. And you can also get, if there are people who tend to wander, you can get big stop signs or like things that can go across doors um, where they should not enter. There are different products that you can get for that. And you can also get those, you know, when you go into a store, there's like a door alarm sometimes when you walk in and out. I have used those kind of motion activated door alarms alerts to let other family members know if somebody's about to. Um, elapse so okay great um shifting gears a little bit here a question about does the bidet use warm water yes the toto brands do they do warm it up and you can adjust the water warmth there are cheap versions of bidets that you can get that are like more manual and they don't they don't heat the water but a fancier one does um i think it's kind of nice to have the warm water but you know if you can't afford it then it's not as bad as you might think to get the cold water spray either. <laughs> Sometimes it's kind of refreshing. Yeah. That's good to know. And then another question just about, there's so many great options that you went over, like for someone to be um, 
I guess like, what's the best way to kind of get an assessment of what an individual might actually need in their home? Is that by getting a consult with an OT or any other suggestions you have for just helping um, the audience kind of narrow in on what's most practical and best for them? So I really do think that talking to an occupational therapist is a great idea if you have access to that and if you're capable. Obviously, if you have a brain injury, like contact me and I will try and help you. Um, if you're unsure. The other thing that you can do is I will try and add to, I didn't put this in my resource list, but I will, um, different general like retailers who sell these kind of types of specific devices. And sometimes I just subscribe to a bunch of those catalogs and magazines and I just flip through them because um, there's a lot of things out there that you would never even know existed. Um, so I think getting a lot of magazines and catalogs can help if you're just kind uh -huh. of searching for things that might be useful. And then don't, you don't necessarily have to purchase through those people, but get an idea of what's out there and then go read reviews. Um, reading the reviews is very helpful. Amazon has a lot of reviews. Sometimes they're fake, so you kind of have to be careful. Um, but the other thing is, is you can always go, sometimes there's forums and things like that to talk to other people, other caregivers or other people, other seniors to find out what's worked well for them. Great. Um, and one more question here, if we have just a minute. Um, any suggestions for, for shoes or types of shoes for individuals that have a sh like shuffle when they walk? Hmm, I don't know of anything specific for a shuffle. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure because on okay. one hand, you would want to make sure that it's not too grippy to cause a to cause a slip or to cause them to trip. But on the other hand, you don't want it to be too slippy, <laughs> slippery, because obviously that has its own, own host of other problems. Um, I would probably talk to your PT, a physical therapist might be able to, to help you one, give you strategies for lifting those feet a little bit more and two, might have some shoe recommendations. That's great advice. Thank you. Okay. Um, so Sarah, we got a lot of folks that are, said, thank you for the great information. And I just want to remind everyone that yes, you will get a copy of the slides. You'll get the list of resources that Sarah has been referencing, um, during the presentation and you will get a recording of this presentation. So look for that early next week um, when we pull all of that together. So, so Sarah, thank you so very much for your time and for sharing all of this great information with us. Um, definitely was was well received and I, <laughs> like I, said, I think people probably jotted down a lot of things for their Christmas list. <laughs> or for good, Christmas. good. That's, that's what it's all about is, you know, sharing, sharing these ideas and getting them out there for people. So I'm glad if it was helpful, it was useful. And again, people are welcome to reach out to me if they have additional questions. And Wonderful. thank you for having me. I'm, I'm so glad that I was able to, to be the closeout for your lecture series. So yeah, thank yeah, you. Fantastic. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, because of the holidays in December, we won't have our healthy aging lecture, but we will be back in January and look forward to having you join us then. Um, and I wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.